Alright, here we go. YouTube is up. Alright, let's go across the stream. Let's just wait for the uh yeah, let's just wait for everyone to join. Okay. Um when we when we hit at least five, maybe six six viewers then I'll start. Okay, we got four. Alright. Come on guys, another two more. Five, okay, we got five viewers up in the chat on YouTube, alright. Okay guys, welcome everybody, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm just going to be going over some tips and tricks on how to utilize your practice mode basically, alright? Um, can you guys hear me? Just let me know in the chat. I just want to make sure you can hear me clearly. Someone in the chat just reply. <laughs> okay. Alright, I'm gonna get started now. So, basically... Alright, so when you're going to enter your practice sessions, right? Um, the first thing you need to ask yourself is... What is a fighting game based on? right so fighting games in general are based on online experiences right online platforms so the first step you should do right when it comes to training and honing your skills you want to hit start right go to the online tab all right go to the online tab make sure that this feature is on okay the reason why i say that is because this will help you um, execute your combos and whatever it is you're trying to do in practice mode so that you can apply it online because keeping in mind there's online delay and those type of things so online and offline are totally different things all right so if you are just at home and you plan on going into combat league or ranked or whatever make sure that you have this offline input delay feature on so it can really help you with your execution with combos etc etc cool right that's step number one. Step number two. Okay. Let's go into practice. Cabal. So I've, I'm gonna choose Cabal and I'm gonna choose Luca. Right. And let's load them up. Okay, so now you're in practice mode, and now you don't. Now you're thinking, okay, where do I go from here? So when you are in practice mode, okay, you want to focus on. When you're in practice mode, you want to focus on three things, right? Which is your combos, your reactions, and your defense. Okay, so those are your three main goals when it comes to utilizing practice mode effectively. Okay. So, <clears throat> um, first things first, practice options, all right, make sure your frame data is on, set on both, and we'll, we'll discuss the rest as we go along. Let's put this off for now. All right, cool, everything is set to default. 
uh, yeah okay cool so basically in your let's start here in the practice options obviously we know what this means like you said you place your positions where you want to focus on, on the left side uh, on the right or wherever okay so if maybe you don't want to focus on the right maybe you want to focus just about here in this situation where you're practicing for a potential combo then you click on update saved position and let's say for instance i am playing now Liu kang all right and what should be my what should be my go-to when it comes to maybe landing this crushing blow and you land and you know oops oops okay so, okay let's move it approximately just here let's move it further to yeah now we update it again. So da da boom pa. Yeah. Right. Different combos are different combos are for different situations or circumstances. For instance, um, as as a Liu Kang player, if you are go if you want to work on your your punishes, right? Now say for instance you block the nomad dash, right? Notice, okay, hold on. Let me do it from full screen rather. Full screen. Okay. Okay, hold on. Or maybe from default. See, my point is what I'm trying to do is certain strings or certain unsafe special moves have a bit of pushback. Now, let's say for instance that pushback was here and I blocked that. Uh, uh, um, and I blocked that specific um, special move and it's unsafe. Notice how Liu Kang is kind of far and he's got like very poor neutral so, you, so for him specifically you need to micro dash in and get that punish you know um, or you can just go with the back three and get a punish or whatever the case. So that will that's that's basically it when it comes to combos like it's very straightforward but let me get into the nitty gritty parts for where what you are actually here for. I'm gonna set them both to close. Right. Um let's see, gauge both. No damage info, frame data. Okay. Yeah, here we go. This is the part. This is what people do not make use of. So let's make a random example. If you are if you wanna practice your your heat confirms, right? So you, you wanna practice your heat confirms and you you checking you wanna check at which point can I successfully do a a launcher, you know, or do something safe to keep myself safe? So in this case, it would be Cabal, all right? So now you set your your block mode to random attack, okay? So which means at, at any given point, I have to be ready to make sure that I can hit confirm and launch the guy to see if he gets hit or not, okay? So... Let's say the standing the forward four, for example. It's hard to hit confirm of of one hits in this game, but there is a, it is possible. As you can see. Oh hold on. Ah. 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 Okay, I'm missing it now, but Ah. Sorry guys. There we go. It's been a while since I played the ball, but it is possible. So you can go with your, um, let's see, yeah. Uh, oops. See? So that's me practicing my one hit, it confirms. Okay. Um, right. So this is a very good tool in terms of it confirming, all right? Now, let's say you wanna figure out what are or, or where the flawless block gaps are in certain strings, all right? So what you wanna do is you wanna set this to all and you wanna set your block type to flawless block, okay? So every time I land a hit, it's gonna flawless block. So unfortunately, Cabal doesn't, he, he doesn't have any flawless block gaps really. Whereas Liu Kang does, okay. So now we're gonna set flawless block. So there's a flawless block gap over there. 
all right so had you not so if you take this off on normal you'll notice that Liu Kang is plus four okay but when flawless lock it he's negative 11 which means he is open for a punish so the this is a the type of technique that you need to utilize across the board of the roster okay another example i could make is um with cabal's wake up options all right let me just see um let me just take him off block uh let's see the wake up options there we go okay right there so let's say i want to okay oh sorry my bad now it's negative 10 okay which means you can get i can possibly get a punish yeah so now that's negative 10 if i just block it normally now watch what happens if i if i flawless block it hold on kind of odd there we go it becomes more negative if you flawless block it all right so if you flawless block certain strings or certain moves or certain certain hits and etc etc it becomes more negative than what it is all right so this you can you this you need to practice all across the board when it comes to learning different matchups all right um so that will this will fall under more fall under your 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 um your defense so to say okay um let's see let's see what happens if floor if i flawless block the let me just see this yeah I'll flawless block the this okay, that's negative two okay Hold on. um Okay, um, there, there we go. So a string like that, I actually found out today that this has a flawless block gap. This, when you see this type of string from a Liu Kang player, you can flawless block and launch him for this. Okay. Yeah. But unfortunately, it does not change the frame date. So you, the same like with the wake up options that I showed earlier, not all your moves or, or not all the strings that are flawless blockable will change in terms of frame data like this. So if you don't flawless block it, it becomes plus four. And if you do flawless block this string, it becomes negative 11. Okay, so you need to practice these type of strategies and techniques all across the cost of who you are trying to practice against. Cool. Um, yeah let's see movement reversal oh okay now let's well let's go on to hello mr cassandra prime how's it going sir hope you well okay um yeah as i was saying um where is it reversal moves okay obviously reversal moves are basically what they are reversal moves so if you yeah if someone if if i set the computer to a reversal move such as flying kick like i did here flying dragon kick um the minute the block stun ends okay um the minute the block the block stun of the move ends then that specific move will come out so if i do okay see will come out immediately cool now notice something here when it comes to learning a character okay i just let me read from twitch uh, cassandra prime loving the lab time did you show them how to set re recording to random not yet not yet not yet okay <clears throat> oh yes the random select yeah uh, random attack yes i did show that already okay so notice how Liu kang wants to react with a flying kick while i'm doing this thing you see so if i just do the one he reacts but when i do two he try to react in between now reason why i say that why i'm highlighting this is because certain strings are meant to be shimmy strings for instance if you get a down one and you want to jail with your standing one so your standing one 
becomes, let's say, now your standing one is a mind game. So your standing one is plus plus one in this case for Cabal. So now it'll be standing one plus one. You can go for mix up as a grab. And then the next time maybe you condition your opponent enough to scout that you're going to try and grab after this. Then you can change up the, the mind game and go for a shimmy. Whereas he would react with flying kick or whatever the case. So, you know, that type of thing. I hope that's, that's understood. Okay, cool. So, let's see. Um, okay, we went over random attack, reversals, etc. Now, here comes the reaction section of what I want to accomplish for today. What you want to do is... People ask me, how do I always, how am I so consistent when it comes to flawless blocking on the reaction? So if I basically, if I'm Luke Kang, right, um, if I'm Luke Kang and, let just take him off. If I'm Luke Kang and people see me do this, right, then from here, my opponent's first reaction, or in this case, Cabal's best reaction would be to either uh, a standing one, always forward four. Uh, obviously I would recommend the forward four because it's a nine frame mid and it's up close. So let's go over here. All right, watch carefully. You're going to set your re go to record, go to recording slots. Okay. Then you go to custom get up slash reversal. So this means that whatever move you are about to record here for the AI to perform will be, will be, it will be in, like the inputs will be inputted or the commands will respond basically sorry that's what i meant to say so the commands will respond either on a situation where they get up or when they finished blocking a string all right so for example i'm going to set cabal to do um that okay cool so now i move over here after i did my recording i move here i go to reversal attack I scroll for re custom reversal um, with navigation. Okay, I always put it on navigation just for, I'll explain why. There's two different ones. There's one for custom reversal. In fact, let me show you why. Let me show you why. So basically, with just custom reversal, right? All right. So he's just going to do that. He's just going to do that string on custom reversal on the like uh, after the block sorry <clears throat> sorry hiccups guys yeah when he fin when he's finished blocking that string however if you are going to use custom reversal with navigations right this is what it actually means so let's say for instance um perfect example so let's say Liu kang wants to go for his plus frames all right cool now you go okay Now he goes for his plus frames. Okay. And now you as the... Uh, no, sorry. My mistake. <laughs> there we go. This is what I actually want to show. So after that, notice how I recorded him to dash backwards. Okay. So that is the difference with custom reversal and custom... Sorry, custom reversal and custom reversal with navigation. Instead of just doing the back one two from Cabal, he will do the dash first and then do the back one two. Right? So if he is going to Okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. He needs he's gonna react because there's a gap here, he's going to react on the on the just before this the last he hit. So I have to space it out. I'm gonna just space it out. You see? So you saw what, he, what happened there. He tried to dash backwards first. Okay? So just keeps, keep those type of things in mind. So you come across uh, a loop player and he's trying to... Oops. Uh, my, my bad. Um, and he tries to go for that plus friends. Let me see if I can record Cabal doing something else. Um, okay. One, two. Da, 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 boom. Okay. You a little bit late. Let's see. There we go. You see? Now, 
it reacts off the oh, it's movement base is what you're saying yes basically it's movement base yeah so as you could see cabal was able to dash out of the plus frames on the last hit okay and now i woof and i and then just like that i can get counter punished for taking my for trying for trying to take my plus frames and take my turn again okay but obviously i'm doing it without micro dashing which is one of the key components when it comes to execution for combos as well as worth punishing. So if your Liu Kang opponent is too slow to micro dash like this, for example, so instead of just doing this and then going again and getting worth punished, this is what I mean. If your Liu Kang player is not micro dashing in, you know, to go and establish that plus frames, then that is where the 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 utility of backdashing and wolf punishing comes into play etc etc and especially and especially the um the 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 what the navigations set on all right now back to what i was what i was initially showing you so let's just do this okay so if i'm Liu Kang, yeah, sorry, let me just sit. So now I set Cabal to do that command on the last frame as it's blocked, okay? So now I'm doing this. Cool. So that's what he's gonna do after he blocks all of that. Now, let's see. If I want to work on my flawless blocking, this is how I do it. So in my mind, I want to blab against uh, the fastest reaction of Cabal when he is blocking the string. All right, let's take some. It, take, it takes a few tries, but it is possible. Okay. Cool. So you get the idea. This is how I practice with my flawless blocking. So if, for example, if um. Also another thing, like especially when when people knock me down, right? Like this. Let me show you. So I'm gonna get knocked down. Oh wait, better yet. Um, I'm gonna record and I'm gonna set the delay get up on. All right. So I'm gonna make sure he knocks me down. Okay. Now watch carefully. He's gonna knock me down. I delay my way. I wake up. Oops. Watch again. Ah, oh, shit. Okay. Ah. Oh. Let me just get the timing right. There we go. Okay. So you see that. This is how I practice my flawless blocking. Whether I'm knocked down, or whether I'm standing, or whatever. Every time. Okay. See if I can do the last hit. There we go. So you get that. But now you have to be careful because sometimes, um, let's see, Alex Sykes. Hey, how's it going, sir? Alex Sykes on YouTube says, "Great informative video, man. Going to help a lot of casuals and high-level peeps get through a mind, get through a mind game and matchups. Yes, no, definitely. That's the point of this whole stream. I just thought I'd." issue it out there for everyone so you can broadcast it and share it over twitter i don't mind whatever the case uh yeah as i was getting to the point so you have to be careful on what you are trying to flawless block if you are a Liu Kang player so for instance um sometimes your flawless block will get beaten and what i mean by that is if you're so now let's say instead of going for um for the forward four from cabal so picture your cabal opponent doing 1-1 one, one, instead of 4-4 four, four. this is what will happen basically so okay let's see so i recorded him to do that so now oh okay let's try something else so you can actually beat it um let's see yeah Okay, so you can beat pretty much everything that he does. 
Um, okay, let me see if I can make a better example with Liu Kang. So now I'm gonna set Liu Kang to do that. Let's see, go. Um, okay, cool. So now, okay. So on the last hit, he's gonna react. Notice how he tries to react on just when the third hit is coming on. Keep those things in mind. At the last final frame, your your AI dummy is going to react when you record these type of things. All right, so. All right, so I'm trying to flawless block now. Okay, hold on. Come on. It's kind of hard to ex to. Let me see. Okay. okay. Do you see that? I'm trying to, I'm trying to launch him with a flawless block up too. Ah, I'm off now. There we go. See, I tried doing a up too. So you need to be very careful with certain strings or um, if you wanna like. You need to be aware of the patterns of what your opponent is doing. Maybe your opponent is try and do this um, after after blocking. You know, after blocking your string, it's probably gonna do a poke. But unfortunately, Liu Kang's poke is very bad, as you can see. Let's try this maybe. Okay. Again. Okay. So that's why your up three will become a punish or a better punish depending on what they are going to respond with. You need to read your opponent throughout the match and see what the, what move they are using if they are going to block this string. Or if they are going to use um, the one, two, three, that type of thing. So your up two won't work. Let's see. Ah, see you guys, I'm rusty. <laughs> oh, there we go, it worked now. That will work, definitely. Okay. Let's see. If you wanna save me to try shimming. I'm just reading the comments from Twitch. I'm gonna floor the last hit. Make sure they don't reversal block attack you for trying to throw. Wait, say again. Make sure they don't reversal flawless block attack you for trying to throw out buttons and flawless block attack yourself. That's a common problem I notice. Wait, I'm trying to understand this now. Make sure they don't reversal floor. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, I see what you mean. I see what you mean there. That's a, that's a good point. Um, yeah, so basically, like I was saying, guys, you need to be wary of what your opponent is responding with. Be it that, or the poke, or even that forward 4 example that I showed you with regards to, um, um, you know, like, uh, um, making the read, so to say and what you should up to or up three with or whatever the case um even certain strings won't even like certain strings or certain moves won't even register for the follow-up because you flawless block them for example if i do this all right let's see mm -mm. nope see that if he if you do not flawless block then the full command will come out on the record all right then if then if you don't flawless block the full thing will come out and you can get that see the follow-up didn't come out because it was flawless block that applies for um, that applies for a lot of moves across the roster all right cool so yeah so what did we go over we went over he confirms some shimmies and the throw mind games and the flawless blocking so that's basically how i got 
how I got better at flawless blocking and making certain reads. Um, now, let me show you some tips and tricks regarding micro ducking. Okay. Uh, that move has a 14 frame cancel advantage, meaning they're going into a 20 frame move. You have 6 frame to flawless block. Yes, you correct, you correct there, Mr. Uh, Cassandra Prime. Listen, guys, Cassandra Prime says here in the Twitch chat, that move has a 14 frame cancel advantage, meaning they are going into a 20 frame move. So you have 6 frames to flawless block, basically. That's what he was saying. Okay. Um... Sure. What was I going to explain now? <laughs> um, where was I? Where was I going with this? Uh, oh yeah, micro ducking. So, with micro ducks, okay. Uh, perfect example would be if I use Blue Kang, and now, uh, yeah. Okay. So on the last frame, he's going to react with that. Let me just see. Okay, negative six. Okay guys, you need to pay close attention to this, alright? So, when it comes to micro ducking, which is a very risky and a very advanced technique, it's not always guaranteed, but with a lot, with some practice, you can pretty much make it look very convincingly guaranteed, alright? Okay, so, the... No, one, notice something here, okay? Let me just see... Okay, there we go. Notice something here. If I do this string... Okay. It become never mind the never mind the fact that he reacted. Look at the block advantage. It's negative six. Now watch carefully. Watch what happens here. You see that? So I can interrupt because I'm negative six. That's the micro duck gap. Now, however, if you are um. If you are, let's say, nope, let me see, oh, sorry, let me just see this, okay, that's negative five, I know there's a string where, yes, there it is, okay, now, notice how I cannot micro duck after being negative seven, okay, watch carefully, on, ne on minus six on block, I can get a micro duck. But when I'm negative seven, I'm jailed. I can't block. I'll show you my commands. I'm holding down. I'm holding down off doing that string. See my commands? I'm doing forward four, holding down. I am jailed into that um, specific situation, which means I cannot micro duck at all. So if you come across any character that is up close and you block this string and it's negative seven, Make sure you're standing one, which is, let's see, a seven frame standing one for Cabal, okay? So make sure that whatever that number is, if the number, the higher, if it's negative seven and up from there, you can jail, okay? You can jail your standing ones to make sure that they are not mashing, etc. Especially if you're blocking um, Kotal Khan's, um, Kotal Khan's Panther. You know that that panther we goes full screen, etc., etc., and um, also the forward two string. If you block that full string, not the unsafe one, just the forward two four, I believe. And I think that is, I think that is negative seven as well. I'm not sure, but my point is negative seven is your sweet spot. Okay, negative seven is approximately your sweet spot for trying to jail. So this is where I say you have to be careful on taking chances when it comes to flawless blocking. Alright, so in this situation, I cannot micro duck, but right here, I can micro duck there. So if you're gonna take a chance, that's what you can do. Keeping in mind, I'm trying to duck here. Okay, so yeah, because negative six isn't actually punishable, but negative seven is the last string safe. Yeah, but you have to respect it. Yes, of course. All right. Cool. So as far as micro ducking is concerned, um, let's see. Okay. Let's see. These are these for these one two is are both highs. Okay. And look at the gap between the first two hits. So the first one is a seven frame. The second hit. Is a nine frame all right so you literally have a two frame window to try and micro duck so now i'm going to play cabal 
um, I'm going to pick a ball. You still need to do that full string. Um, let me just see how negative I am here. Okay, I'm negative five. Okay, so let's use that string to try and micro duck. Here we go. So, reason why I s why it was easy for me to to micro duck cabal's in between cabal's um first and second hit is because if you look at the standing one at seven frames. The second hit is 15 frames, so that means there is a, so from 7 it goes 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There is an 8 frame window. That is a big window for you to micro duck and get an interruption going, okay? Quick maths, quick maths. Where in this case it is 7 frames into 9 frames on the second hit when it comes to micro ducking. Alright, so um, let's do this. You have to be very fast. If I am late at the slightest amount, I can get punished or counted, basically. All right. So make sure you apply this type of technique um, across the board. I, I believe sub zeros one two is also two frame gap or one frame gap, but I do think it's possible. I do. I think I did it before, but that's risky, even more riskier, especially when it comes to online. All right. <coughs> Right, so let's see what else did I want to cover with you guys today. Oh, oh, yes, yes, this is my favorite part. <laughs> I'm sure everyone is going to love this part of the um, of the tutorial. Uh, block attack. Let's see. Let me just see something. Uh, let's see. All right, let's go here real quick. Um, Lu Kang's. I think it's the. Which one is it where he has the nunchucks? I want to see something. Before I move over to... Before I move over to the next section, I just want to check Liu Kang's nunchucks. No, not that one. What is... The one where he has the, the stance. The... the. I think it's in variation 3. Yeah, the tournament variation. There we go. Yeah. I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but certain special moves, as well as certain strings, have flawless block gaps. Okay? For example, Cabal's gonna flawless block everything, right? So, as you can see, he's gonna flawless block that, and he's gonna flawless block that. But now, with special moves, watch carefully. Oh, here's a... Um... Did you see? Not many people know that there is a flawless block gap on that second hit. Or is it the third hit? One, two. Yes, on the second hit. One, two, three, four. Okay, so there's four hits on that string. So on the second hit, there's a flawless block gap. Now you need to ask yourself, why on earth would people, or why would, or why would the developers add a second flawless block gap there? Because, on flawless block it, Look how much chip damage that does. So let's say you are on a life deficit of a 1% or a 2% pixel. Let's see how much damage this does. Okay, so that's 94. Okay, so, that's, uh, so it's a thousand. Okay. Basically five five percent chip, so to say. Yeah, am I right? Yeah, like a five percent or six percent chip. So if you maybe have like one or two percent left he can do this for free and you will get chipped out especially if he has if he has this move as well as um the energy parry which gives him an even more damaging buff so it's very important that you guys keep those type of things in mind when you are labbing against certain characters you need to find all the flawless block gaps um Yeah, find all that flawless block gaps for whatever matchup you are preparing for. All right, so I'm gonna I'm going to sit looking to do that. I want to see if I can maybe land it for myself. Um, oops. Mm. 
Shoo. So, <laughs> you cannot throw this block up to it because of the multiple hits. I am godlike. I am godlike. <laughs> I am godlike. <laughs> All right, cool. So, um, does this work from strings into this? Yes, it does indeed. It does indeed. So, if you go, um, uh, guys, you are free to ask me questions, eh? Um, for ask me any questions or whatever the case. I don't mind helping out. So, let's record looking, doing ta ta boom ta ta ta. You can definitely do it. So okay, let's do it. Then. Oops. It's easier for me to get the flawless block down. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to get all three. I'm trying to fall as well that. Okay. Ah, come on. There we go. I got all three. Okay. So basically that is how this is how intense my labbing sessions become. Sometimes I I'll maximum I lab like six hours a day three hours in the morning and three hours at night or whatever the case if if i'm not gonna play combat league or online or whatever the case right so yeah okay now th what i want to go over now is the wake up options in this game <laughs> so a lot of people hate the hundred million thousand ways to wake up in this game okay so now Let's say you want to work on your meaties, okay? You want to work on your meaties, you got your opponent knocked down, and now you are f afraid for your life of what could possibly be the option, okay? So let's say wake up jump is going to be option. Wake up jump, all right? Now you want to practice your, your meaties, right? So to cover all your options, so, notice how, there we go, on the last one, I made sure you were still standing, okay, so as a Cabal player, if you land this, you will be slightly off, there we go, okay, now notice how this boils down to frame data, so if he lands, if Cabal lands that at a hit advantage of 25, as you can see there by Liu Kang's legs, it says, it says there, hit advantage 25 after landing the hook grab. Alright, now notice what, notice what I did there. I didn't just press the moves, as you can see there's space, alright. So I micro dashed. And then I did my execution of the of the meaty attempt. Now, now you may be asking asking me, how are you able to get it so perfectly? Well, it's simple. The forward two is 12 frames, right? Yeah, you have 25 frames to do anything you want. Yes, that's true. But just pay attention to this. So the f the forward two is 12 frames already, all right? What you guys don't know is that you're dashing. And your stance switch are 10 frames. It's approximately 10 frames. So basically, let's add it together. You got 25. This is 10 frames. Alright, the dashing is 10 frames. And this move is 12 frames. Okay, so now you tell yourself 10, sorry, so you tell yourself 25 minus 12 minus 10. 
and whatever that amount is, I'm not going to calculate in my head right now, that is the amount of frames that your opponent has to do something. You know? If that makes sense. So, 25 minus 10, okay, so that is... Uh, that's 15, so minus another 10, and minus 2... That's 3 frames, basically. So your opponent has 3 frames to do something. Now, in this game, there's no move that is 3 frames. Alright, there's no move in this game that is 3 frames. So they have 3 frames to do something, so the choice is this. Either they are going to respect your turn, either they are going to respect your turn, or... Yeah, oh yeah, respect your turn in terms of blocking, or they are going to try and wake up jump, wake up buttons, or wake up down one, whatever the case. Sorry guys, my, my cat wants to come into the door. <laughs> Just give me a second. Uh, just give me a second. Come, let's go. Uh, there you go. Alright, cool. Alright, so basically, now you want to cover your meaties, okay? Technically, you're plus 32 or 33. Uh, because you add that to the 25. Mm, nah. <laughs> no, let's just stick to, let's just stick to my method. <laughs> 10 frames is your start switch and 10 frames is your, your, um, your dash, okay? Cool. Right, now you want to work on your meaties, okay? So let's sit your opponent to wake up down one all right now uh, you do the sweep how, how plus am I and plus 13 nice so plus 13 all right. all right so what I did there is 25 plus 25 right I dashed in took away 10 frames all right so then I had 15 frames left. So now that 15 frames minus 9. You guys do the math. That is why I am in time for my meeting. The hours late there. There we go. Okay. So at the last frame, he's going to wake up down one, basically. However, in those circumstances. 25 frames and you have a 15 frame back one so that's already 15 frames away so that's 25 frames with the hit advantage minus 15 dash and then you do your back one it's guaranteed so what I'm essentially doing is called a frame kill so I'm killing 10 frames I'm killing 10 frames, making making the dash my frame kill. So I'm dashing in, which is 10 frames, going in with my 15 frame. Alright, does that make sense with everyone so far? <laughs> cool. Um, next, um, I'm just going to keep this tutorial like under an hour or so, so we're almost done. So now you want to... Let's say you want to. If I'm if I'm the Luke Kang player, um, what what's Luke Kang's knockdown? Yeah, let's see. Um, down one. Oops, oops. Okay, let's see if he is gonna wake up down one. There we go. Okay. Plus 41. Wow, that's a lot of frames. So that's already 41 minus 10 minus 10. And I'm starting with a 10 frame, uh, a 10 frame standing 2 string. And notice how all three of those hits are 10 frames. And your opponent is on the floor. Alright, so. 1, 2. Okay, maybe that won't work. 1, 2. Okay, that won't work either. Ta -ta. But that will work. Alright, so basically it's a it's a one dash and one micro dash and ink. So basically it looks like this. I dashed in, micro dash, and then do the forward four. Just to get the meaty right. Okay, so after I knock him down. He cannot press a button. One more time. Just to make sure that he is doing a down one. There you go, down one. One, two, micro, micro dash, get my meaty with forward four. 
and just like that I could have just like that I could have gotten my crushing blow because he tried to wake up and press buttons disrespect my turn so this applies basically for all your options whether your opponent is going to uh, um, wake up jump wake up yeah, wake up jump let's see See, I was late there. Here we go. Wake up jump. Uh, wake up buttons. Every time. Every time. Cool. So, yeah. That is how you can cover certain options. Now, when it comes to fact, this is oh yes, yes, yes. This is also what I wanted to show you guys. Um, delayed. Okay, so maybe they delay. Let's see. Okay, he delays his, his wake up there. Now, if I want to do this, okay. So I'm plus thirty four there. Can you see something here? Plus 54. Mm, okay. Okay, my best example, I have to change character. Let me just change character quickly. Let me change the scorpion. It's best best idea I can show right now. Okay. Yeah, let's use a co let's use yeah let's use Liu Kang again. All right. Now the reason why I switched to Scorpion, okay, is because Scorpions meaty attempts or meaty buttons are not necessarily good per se like his, his only meaty option is his 4-3 right then he has to hit confirm okay but now notice something of the um notice something of the hard knockdown okay so i'm plus 25 right watch this like I said, Scorpion doesn't have a guaranteed fast mid up close, right? A fast mid, like 10 frames or so. So let's say they delay their wake up. Okay. And now they're still going to do wake up buttons on top of it. Let me see. Okay, let's see quickly. Hold on. So now we're going to set them to delay and we're going to set them to get up. All right. I'm gonna set them there. Um, just hold on. Bah. And there we go. So you see, certain players will delay their wake up, wait for you to whip, and so that they can try and steal their turn. And just like that, you can get beaten out like that, you know? There. They get the punish, and now it's their turn automatically, okay? Now. Alright. Um, basically, this is. This is my option as a Scorpion player. Watch. Do you see that? I'm plus 25. Plus 25 on on heat advantage. Sorry, I'm lying. Hold on. I'm 40 plus 45 now because he delayed his his um his uh, get up animation. So now basically one two ta. Uh, uh, all right. Stone switch, and I worth my standing one. So my standing one recovery. Plus my startup, plus my active frames. So that is 7 plus 2, that's 8, 9. Plus 17, which is... Ugh, let me get my calculator. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm not that good with math. <laughs> 7 plus 2 plus 17. So that's 26 frames, alright? So now we delays. Okay, so I'm plus 45. Now I am killing... 26 frames by doing this. Turn switch and getting my meaty. Alright. So the start up of this 
and my dash. That is 26 frames out of that 45. So 45 minus 26, and then plus the startup of the second hit, which is 13 plus 3 plus 20. Okay, that is the meaty. Um, that is the meaty opportunity slash window as a scorpion player. If you get that hard knockdown, you can actually work. You can actually hit confirm that of one hit. Let's see. Yeah, you can. Back to back to the, the beginning of what I said earlier. So if he if he delays, right, and he tries to wake up, let's see if he. Yeah. Okay. So you can practice your hit confirms off of that. Alright, so we covered meaties, we covered finding and identifying flawless block gaps and strings and how to work on reactions and things like that. Um, breakaway, I think, I don't think that there's much to actually discuss, but I do want to point out that certain launches in this game, right? Such as Scorpion Spear. I everyone is awarded a armor breaker in this game. But in most most of the time or if not all the time, Scorpion cannot even cannot Scorpion cannot even um land his his launcher because because of the 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 breakaway window which is very fast all right uh badger just asked the question now why is stance important well as i as i explain with this okay because i'm plus 25 and i want to get a meaty that is my meaty because just in case so basically my stance switch is 10 frames right so that's a frame kill basically so i'm taking 25 25 hit advantage right if I do this, and he doesn't, let's say he doesn't delay. Let's, let's see. Let's say he doesn't do a delay option. See that? So he didn't delay his wake up and try to steal a turn. He just got up and did a down one. So here's the difference. Notice, notice, watch very carefully. You see that? Now... Watch this, the delayed option. Do you see that? One more, one more time, one more time. This is the the with the delay on. Stone switch, get a meaty. Because he tried to wake, because he was trying to wake up, delay wake up, and then mash buttons. So, without if you make the read that your opponent is not going to delay his wake up. You can go straight for that meaty with that second hit as a scorpion player so stone switch can help a lot it can help a lot especially when it comes to flawless blocking um get up moves get up attacks basically all right so let's see so he's gonna answer with that all right Watch here. You see that? Now, this is once again. These are all techniques that I use when it comes to flawless blocking. Get up attacks. All right. Let me just see. Most get up attacks are ten frames, but as we can see, Liu Kang's up three is eight frames. All right. So it will be between eight to ten, sometimes more, and I'm not sure if it's the same for. I'm not sure if it's um, if it's the same for what's it the the up twos. Let's see, eight frames as well. Okay, so it's the same as the up three. All right. Now, if you you asking me, for example, how do I, how am I getting it right to flawless block? All right. 
It's simple. Remember, after the 1-1-2, one, one, I am plus 24. Hit advantage, plus 24. Alright. Now, what I'm doing here is, after I have done the hard knockdown, I'm plus 24. And like I explained earlier, your, your dash and your stance switch are 10 frames. So, now you tell yourself, 24 minus 10, minus 10. You've got a four frame window to flawless block. So basically, after I land this, by the time, by the time the animation is done of the stone switch, I immediately hold block, and that will instantly give me the flawless block. All right, but it does it does take time to master. You just need to practice it. So, Twenty five. Yeah, so you get the idea basically. So that is why it is important to make use of your dashing and your stance switch. People always thought stance switch is useless, but it's not. As you can see, all right, I'm utilizing, okay, when I play as Sonya, I prefer to walk forward first it helps me get the timing better. Ah, okay. Yeah, well, yeah, sure. Everyone has their, their own way, Mr. Soul Vibe. Welcome to the stream. First time I'm seeing you here. Um, so yeah, everyone has their own f way of doing things. But me personally, what I've discovered is that your dashing and your stone switch are both approximately 10 frames. All right, so one more time. Cool. I'm plus 25, 10. Yeah, plus 25, 10, ah, plus 25, 10, 10, and then 10, 10, boom, just like that. You have to be very fast on the dash and the stance switch. Plus 25, 10, 10, and then you launch them, da, da. here we go, and you go for your follow-up, basically. Right. Um... Yeah, that's basically uh, that's basically all I can show you on how to utilize your practice mode effectively when it comes to um, uh, um, your your um, yeah using all the AI options and the mechanics etc etc especially when it comes to practice options um, especially with spacing and things like that you know so oh yeah when it comes to spacing in this game all right. The more space you control in this game, the better, okay? Now, what I mean by that is, notice carefully how I am literally up close and personal in front of his face, right? Now, notice this one dash space, right? Puts me here. I'm gonna save it. One dash space puts me here as Scorpion. Now, well, notice the difference. One jump space is fairly slightly more. All right. Now, reason why I'm showing you this is because this is how I practice my space control when it comes to Scorpion. I'm a Scorpion main. I'm a Scorpion main for life. I've always been a Scorpion main. So, watch carefully. The dash space covers that. The back one. Jump one space covers that as well. Up close here. Well, because 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 Liu Kang's animation is doing this, so his hit box, his hurt box is moving around, so to say, as you can see. All right, so one jump space. Depending on if if he stands still, <laughs> if he stands still, then I can land that and this as well. Now let's go one two. Okay, let's go here. Sorry, let's go here. Okay. All right. So if you want to get the perfect spacing. For certain moves like Scorpion's back one. Always test the spacing out like this. First set yourself right in front. 
Now I'm gonna count one, two. All right. Now I do one, two, and right here. That's where I can land it. That's how I practice my spacing. One more time. So I want to know how far do I have to be to make sure that I'm within a reach of the back one. This is just an example for Scorpion, but you need to apply this for all your characters. So once again, one. One jump, one space, right? One, two. Right here. Once again, update, save position. And just like that, I figured out my spacing, my neutral. Get it? Certain moves are different. For instance, one, two, two jumps. All right, let me see this. Okay. One, two, three. All right. Let me see this quickly. One, two, ta, ta. All right, hold on. One, two, three. Okay, I'm trying to get the perfect spacing. I know, it, I know there's a formula for this. One, Two. Dash. Okay, no, still not. One, two, three. Nope. So it's definitely one, two, three. Da, da. Okay, so approximately, uh, more or less here. This is where... I, this is the spacing where if I want to practice my back two. Because on the very tip of that sword... The very tip of that sword of the back two is when I can is where is how far I can reach him. So that's basically um one, two, and what did I do? Back dash. Yeah. Okay, that's a bit too close. One, two, three. Ah, uh, here we go. I'm in I'm in range now. I'm in perfect range. Update again. Yeah. So one two three one two yeah just the uh, sweet spot and also for those of you that don't know that are possibly scorpion mind you can hit confirm this as you can see you can hit confirm that right so that is basically all I can share with you in this 69 minutes of the tutorial throw escape um let's see okay let's go over throw escape just for the sake of it let's see all right here we go this this is this can be very tricky right so as scorpion right i need to know what is the best move to do even in case my opponent takes a throw this is what I do, alright? I'm not sure if it's gonna work for everyone, but this is what I do as a Scorpion man. And I make sure to hit confirm this, obviously, before I launch. Reason being is because... Look at the spacing. My back one can't reach. But my back two can. Just in case they try to... Uh, um, let me see if I can record... Let me see if I can record um, Liu Kang trying to take my throw quickly. Um, I need to put, I need to time this very perfectly. Okay, hold on. Oops. Okay, alright, so it's the forward throw. There we go. Okay. All right, hold on. What I'm th okay? Just give me a second, guys. Okay. Um, I need to perfectly do this. Ah, damn it! Not that. Is it? Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
Let's see now. Alright. There we go. Okay, so it's two dash spaces and then it registers for the rest. Okay, so now I'm gonna do this. Block. Alright. See? Detect it. Detect it. But I caught him. I still caught him. He tried to dash dash away. Phew, sorry that you had to wait so long to get that guys, but just watch again. Oops. Ah, damn it. You see? He's trying to dash away every time. Every time he takes. But because of my back too, it is catching him the entire time. It covers a lot of space right there. Sometimes the opponent might just uh, jump. Uh, okay, I need to hold that up there. Mm. Okay. Alright, so as a scorpion player... Hold on. Ah, come on. So sometimes that can woof, but most of the time... It always, it always works, it always... There we go, you see? So it does work for in, ter for in terms of if they try to jump after taking a throw. Ah. But your execution has to be on point. Ah. Ah, damn it. Ah, come on. Take the throw. There we go. Ah. There we go. And just like that, I covered. I covered two options using one move. All right. Phew. Now, <clears throat> you have to be careful though, certain characters' um, backdashes are very fast. For example, Rain. If I did my back 2 after a Rain player ticks my throw and he backdashes, I could possibly be open for a punish. Because of the, the speed of the backdashes. Not everybody's da dash speed is the same, which is why you need to experiment with different matchups, etc, etc. So, yeah, that's basically all I have for you guys on how to make the most of your practice sessions and how to utilize each mechanic here. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, that's basically it, guys. Um, like I said, this was just a tutorial showing you... Let's see, what are good anti-airs for scorpions? Asks Mr. Soul Vibe. Um, let's see, good anti-airs for scorpion. Uh, so if you look Kang, right? If you look Kang, down three. So let me just check it out. Yeah, if you are look Kang player, down three is your way, your option. For two reasons. Number one, sometimes that will happen. At the most randomest times, you can be late, they can delay, they can either do it like this, they can either do it like that, or they can even do it like that different timings so I'm gonna put this on playback and I'm gonna put it on random so see the standing one is risky as a Liu Kang player because I'm trying to enter it consistently now whereas you're down three it lowers your hurt box and you are safe yeah. And you can still get a combo. Like... You know what I mean? That type of thing. 
So yeah, uh, I meant as scorpion. Oh, as scorpion. Uh, standing one. Definitely standing one. Um, down ones, I don't think so, to be honest. I highly doubt it. Let's try. No. Definitely not your down one. Yeah. And it's, okay. <laughs> it's risky. It's very risky, but... Standing one. Definitely. Definitely not your standing two, because that has a different range sometimes, you see? Because the reason why reason why this is more effective than your, your standing one is more effective than your standing two. Yeah, the reason why is because you need to look at the active frames. Active frames of the standing one is, is two. Active frames of the standing two is one. So that is... The, uh, even though it's a one frame difference, um, even though it's a one frame difference, it's still, it's it's still a difference at the end of the day. So, it will vary from different characters. Let's see quickly. Okay, yeah, certain standing ones and standing twos or whatever the case, there's a one frame difference between the two in the in terms of active frames. Okay, so. That is essentially basically why I suggest standing one for Scorpion or some in most cases across the board. But it is risky because in this game there are jump kicks or jump ins that are very, very strong. So you just need to be aware of your matchups. You need to practice different matchups. Okay. So yeah, that's about it guys. That wraps it up for this video. Um, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you guys learned something, even if it's something small. If you learned anything today, anything at all, it's at least something that you can take home with you to practice, alright? So yeah, if you enjoyed the stream, um, like and subscribe if you are watching on Twitch. And if, sorry, if you are watching on YouTube <laughs> and follow if you are watching on Twitch, I really appreciate it. Uh, let's just read the last comments quickly. It's tough landing and standing one against jumping for characters like Baraka and Lau. Yeah, I gotta practice it more. Yes, no, definitely. Look, it's when it comes to when it comes to Lau, Jade, Baraka, as a Scorpion player, your best anti air. Your very, very best anti air. And this is hidden tech. Huh? This is hidden tech. But you have to work on your reactions. That's your best anti air. The teleport. Notice how very close he is to kicking me. And because. And because. And because he has 11 recovery frames and he's still airborne, that is why you can punish at a 100% uh, efficiency rate when it comes to using the teleport as an anti-air. Alright? So, yeah. That's basically it, guys. Alright. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I gotta practice more. Yeah, that's probably more reliable. Yes, definitely. That is definitely more reliable as a Scorpion player. But yeah, so you need to experience experience and experiment with whoever it is your main is and whoever it is you're trying to counter practice again or yeah, practice against basically. Alright. Thanks again guys. Thanks for tuning in. Um we will be having our online tournament this Sunday for the Xbox players on in Africa. Right? They will be having their first Xbox FGC money cash money prize cash prize money double elimination tournament it will be streamed here on my channel this sunday on the 4th of april at 4 no yeah 4 p.m gmt plus 2 time zone all right so uh yeah tune in and support the stream for that so yeah that's basically it guys um, I'm not sure if you know, but for Shiva Stomp, I just use Scorpion's air grab. <laughs> that's a that's a that's a topic for another. That's a discussion for another day or another stream, basically. All right, guys, this is me signing off now. Take care.